Hey there. Thanks for joining us on Pumpcast. I'm Brendan Forrest, and I'm here uh, with Jeff Schaefer, our sanitary product manager, and Jeremy Williams, our process technical trainer. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about our experience uh, with a, a test we recently did in our sanitary lab, uh, pumping lotion out of our high sanitary double diaphragm pump, uh, so the process of pumping it and cleaning it. Uh, so before we get into the test, I would like to just talk about uh, lotions in general. So uh, gentlemen, uh, can you just describe what, what lotion is? Uh, what are some of the general characteristics that, uh, that make up lotion? Yeah, good question, Brendan. Um, so as most people are familiar with, you know, lotions go on your skin, right? Your typical hand lotions and creams that you have at home is what we're referencing. So they're generally a, what we would call a low to medium viscosity fluid, right? They're going to be lubricating and moisturizing. So they're not going to be real sticky, but they're going to have some good flow characteristics to them. And they're going to be able to, in general, be, be pumped fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And I would say that uh, the thing that always stands out for me with any lotion, I think the the characteristic that stands out is it has to be creamy in nature. Mm -hmm. um, you don't find a lot of uh, lotions that are are gritty. Um, it has to have, as Jeff said, that self lubricating piece, and it has to really fall within that characteristic of like it's almost like a fluid, like a, a pure fluid, but it has enough body to it where it kind of, it moves well. It's very flowable, sure. like I said. Uh, so flowable, right? So it's pourable, right? Like you can like pour it out of a jar. Correct. Okay. Uh, so what are the typical ingredients that go into lotion production? Uh, and and for the reason that uh, we just talked about flowable and all that kind of stuff, the main ingredient is water, right? So when you think about a, a pure liquid, right? That's the bulk of what lotion is, is water. And then you start adding other stuff to it, um, oils and glycerins and acids and emulsifiers. Um, as most people are familiar with, lotions generally smell pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of scents and fragrances added to them from a chemical standpoint. You can have colorants added to them. Um, some of them have antimicrobial ingredients, right? That kind of fight bacteria or, or that kind of stuff that go on your skin. So um, in general, those are the main ingredients. And because of the main ingredient being water, and that's why it's, it's a pretty flowable liquid. Um, and I think, you know, going back to your point, Brendan, you can tip the jar over and it'll pour. I think that's true for some lotions. Mm -hmm. I think some lotions have enough, uh, enough other ingredients, uh, emulsifiers and that kind of stuff to hold everything together that if you tip it over, it may not move. Right. Okay. Um, so that's where you get into some of those medium viscosity fluids that have a little bit more body to them that, uh, certain pumps will handle better than other pumps, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I really like looking also, um, we think about lotions, the waters, the oils, the glycerins. Um, there's a whole new segment that's really, it's always been around, uh, but it's really starting to pick up steam now. And that's looking at more of the, the all natural um, styles of lotions, uh, starting with, actually, I, I saw one recently that was uh, goat's milk that they were using. Okay. So they, they stabilize the goat's milk and they're using that as the base instead of water. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about what goat's milk is, it is largely water. So yeah. even if we look a little bit deeper into the, the materials, um, there's a lot of like hemp seed oils and um, tea tree oils and things like that. A lot of all natural ingredients, oatmeals uh, that, are, that are being added to these lotions. And when you think about it, if you dig down deep into what those materials are made out of, most of the time there's a chemical composition or a chemical that is being replicated by a standard lotion that you'd see on the store shelves. Okay. So, um, you know, Jeff, like what you said, most lotions are, are creamy and not abrasive, or Jeremy, you might've said it, not abrasive, but some lotions do have some abrasives put into them for like, uh, like microderm abrasion types, type of things. Um, is it the same type of pump that can handle both? Uh, so we did our tests on a diaphragm pump. Is a diaphragm pump going to be able to handle both the creamy lotions and the abrasive lotions? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, when we look at uh, those, uh, I, I like to think about them as being like a pumice added mm -hmm. uh, where they have an abrasive that's added to it. Um, when we look at diaphragm pumps, especially on the sanitary side uh, with our you know, over molded diaphragms, the, the type of Teflon that we use, even the Santaprines that we use uh, are capable of dealing with those abrasives over a long period of time. Um, the abrasives are good for taking off you know, layers of skin, mm -hmm. but you have to think that those are, you know, oftentimes dry skin or dead skin, things that are flake off very easily anyway. 
So yeah. um, it does a our the internals do a pretty good job of protecting uh, the pump through the the over the course of the life of the pump okay. and the balls and the seats as well. Sure. To piggyback uh, on that a little bit, when we talk about pumps as a whole, right? The diaphragm pumps do very well with handling any of that stuff, abrasives or regular creamy. Other pump technologies that can typically be used, like like rotary lobe pumps, progressive cavity pumps, um, twin screw centrifugal, that kind of stuff. Abrasives can be an issue with those rotary type pumps, right? Okay. Um, so if the diaphragm pump can handle it okay, you may run into problems where you're um, tearing up parts or seals or other parts of the pumps if you use a different style that to pump those abrasive or pumice type applications. Well, and, and that kind of goes into uh, kind of piggybacking off of that, uh, thinking about what a lot of those mechanically driven uh, pumps are doing. Oftentimes uh, it's metal on metal or there's a very small clearance. Um, it's not only what the material does to the pump, but what does the pump do to the material? That's one of the reasons why AODDs and EODDs are so good in these applications is uh, you have a very gentle action that's actually interacting with the pump um, or with the material so that you're not introducing a lot of extra heat to the product. You're not shearing it. Um, if there are abrasives in there, you're not clumping those abrasives into edges and corners and things like that, um, where they may end up becoming an issue on the seals or, or, or different, uh, different internal parts. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Jeremy, on the test that you ran in our sanitary lab, uh, what specs did that lotion have, like in terms of viscosity and temperature and that sort of thing? Yeah, so uh, what we were looking at uh, is actually kind of a mid-range uh, lotion. Uh, I would say the general range from a fluid standpoint is around 1,000 centipoise up to, on some of the heavier uh, lotions, up to about 3,000, 4,000 centipoise. Okay. Um, and that's looking at it at just a room temperature and ambient of about 65 to 70 degrees. Uh, the material that we used was about 1500 uh, centipoise. Uh, and that was at 65 degrees that we tested uh, prior to the test. And it was like 65.2 or something like that after the test was done. Um, very, uh, very flowable. Uh, we know that uh, this particular type of lotion we've looked at before, um, and there wasn't anything really surprising about the material uh, and kind of how it was going to perform. Okay, great. Um, all right, so I'd like to talk about, uh, now that we've talked about lotion, let's transition now into like pumping and transferring lotion. Uh, so first off, gentlemen, uh, how are pumps used in lotion manufacturing and packaging? Yeah, so I think there's three main areas where we see pumps being used. The first is on the production side, and that would be to transfer the raw ingredients, right? When you talk about getting water in, oils in, glycerin, the fragrance, you got to get it into a mixed kettle somehow, right? So either that's done by hand, uh, by filling up containers and dumping it in, or you use a pump, right? Uh, so you bring and pump X amount of oil in, X amount of glycerin in, X amount of emulsifier, and then you mix it together. Once the lotion is mixed, then you got to get it out of that mixed kettle. So you put a pump in the bottom and you generally pump it out and you're probably pumping it to a secondary storage container. Most places are, um, or they may pump it directly to a packaging or filling line, depending on the, how the production layout is set up. If it is pumped to a secondary container, now that container is moved to the production or packaging filling line and a pump is used to pump it out of that container into the filling line. So it can be put into smaller containers, packaged and then sold, right? So three main areas on the ingredient transfer to get it out of the kettle and then on the packaging and fill line if there's a secondary storage container. Okay, uh, so in those three different areas, Jeff, what have you seen as being the most common pumping technologies used uh, to get into the mixed kettles from the mixed kettles to the secondary and the fill and then into the actual final packaging? Uh, good question. I think it all, a lot of it depends on volumes, right? So um, for a lot of the ingredient stuff, diaphragm pumps are used quite a bit. Um, on the water side, they'll typically use a high volume centrifugal pump, right? Because okay. it's going to flow pretty easy. And that's usually a lot higher volume than some of the other ingredients, right? Um, when we get it out of the mix kettle, um, it's probably a combination of rotary pumps like we talked about before or diaphragm pumps. Um, rotary load pumps are pretty big in this space and they can be used. Um, they do have some issues with suction and everything. Diaphragm pumps are also very common. And then on the third step, when you talk about transferring it out of a secondary storage container, whether that's a, a little kettle thing or a drum, diaphragm pumps or piston pumps in our space is what we see as the most common. And that's generally because you are probably siphoning it out of that container 
and putting it into a hopper to put into a smaller package and to siphon feed it out, you cannot do that with a centrifugal pump or a rotary load pump, right? They will not pull suction. And that's where diaphragm pumps and piston style pumps excel pretty well. Yeah, and I see that uh, oftentimes with the, the technology and with uh, the ingredients, uh, you think about moving raw ingredients. Uh, oftentimes those ingredients are heated in that mixed kettle so that everything kind of pulls together. Um, so now you have a material that is chemically very, very different than the individual parts. Uh, and oftentimes that means that is more viscous and, and to Jeff's point is a lot more difficult to siphon pull. So that finished product going into that, the, the, all the way through the process, you're adding layers, um, you're adding viscosity to it at each, uh, each point. And then usually at the very end, you're not pumping a warm product into an, applicating, an applicator or into a bottle. You're, you're pumping a cool down product that's ready to go, ready to be packaged. So they can do their, their labeling and their inks and everything uh, downstream, so. Yeah, and, and the cooled product is usually thicker, right? Which is where a diaphragm pump does a little bit better than say the rotary load pump. Um, the other thing that drives a lot of that pumping selection, Brendan, is volumes, right? Uh, if you're working uh, with some of the large manufacturers of lotions out there, the volumes are such that they need higher volume pumps, um, which are generally the rotary type pumps that can do, you know, several hundred gallons a minute pumping it in, right? It, there is also a lot of small boutique manufacturing that's done in the, this space uh, for some of the high-end stuff. And when you get into the small to medium sized stuff, that's where you start to get probably a little bit more usage of the diaphragm pumps moving around and that kind of stuff because they're not producing thousand gallon batches at a time and needing to move that high production type volume, right? Mm -hmm. um, so kind of like a two part question now. So what are some of the common challenges uh, that kind of arise when you're pumping lotion? And is there anything else that our uh, customers should be keeping in mind uh, when they're pumping lotion? Um, you know, maybe I'll start, Jeremy, and you can chime in because I know you've seen quite a bit of applications as well. Um, the first thing is chemical compatibility, right? We talked about the stuff that goes into it. So make sure your pump and the elastomers or whatever is inside of it can handle whatever chemicals you are pumping or cleaning with. Um, second thing is probably viscosity, right? Because there's a wide range. Now, Jeremy talked about viscosity ranges. Um, you talk about lotions and, and even creams. I mean, we've seen creams upwards of a million plus centipoise, right? So getting that stuff out of kettles and containers and moving it down the line, um, that viscosity is going to be a, a big determining factor on what pump technology you can use successfully. Um, so those are probably the biggest challenges that I think I've seen in the space, Jeremy. I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, the only other one I would probably add is, and this is looking at more of the boutique side or uh, more of the controlled side, um, there are some brands that are out there that have a, a, a normal lotion and then they have like a medicated lotion. Uh, and with those medicated lotions, oftentimes there's an additional control that we have to look at from a surface finish of the pump that's being used um, and some co controls to make sure that we're not pumping it too fast, that we're, we don't introduce any type of shear to that medicated uh, portion uh, that's being added, or medicated ingredient that's being added. So that is always a consideration. And that's one of the reasons why the AODD side works so well, is you're not dealing with or worrying so much about the external forces you're adding or, or uh, possibly contributing to the, the ingredient. Yeah, great. And it's a, a great point, Jeremy. Another thing with the medicated lotions, um, not to open too many cans of worms here, is approvals, right? Um, if all of a sudden we talk about medicated stuff that's going to be going on your skin or, or getting into your bloodstream, you may need to be approved to a certain approval standard to put that equipment inside the production facility. So customers just need to be aware of that as well, or on the production side, they need to be aware of that. All right, uh, so let's talk about the, the test that we ran in the sanitary lab. Uh, so Jeremy, can you just tell us what pump we used and what internals were inside of the pump? Yeah, so we used our, our 1590, our Husky, or not, sorry, Husky, <laughs> our Santa Force uh, 2.0 uh, 1590, and we used our high sanitary. And the high sanitary uh, pump line has a 32 RA surface finish, uh, so it is really, really uh, geared towards um, some of the higher quality uh, materials uh, that are being pumped, uh, specifically in this case, the fact that it's a topical lotion or it's something that is going to be put on someone's skin. You wanna make sure you're controlling the quality of that and making sure that you're not adding anything to the, um, 
from a contamination standpoint. Uh, we used uh, Teflon internals and we had the uh, toothpiece uh, diaphragm that was used on this pump. So um, okay. kind of a, a standard uh, high sanitary pump for us and it uh, does a very good job. Uh, we see a lot of them actually being sold into exactly this space into the lotion uh, markets. Okay. Uh, so how did the pump handle the lotion? What sort of performance did we get out of the pump? Uh, very good performance. Uh, some of what uh, Jeff had spoke about, uh, looking at like the loading side, uh, how quickly it loaded. Uh, it took a very, very small amount of pressure uh, to actually load the pump, uh, to actually fill up those fluid uh, fluid cavities. We're looking at, I think we're at like 15 to 20 uh, PSI of air pressure to get everything loaded and flowing. And then once it was loaded, uh, we were only running, I believe like 20 to like 40 um, PSI total. And we we're pushing it out very quickly uh, mm -hmm. to the point where we actually had to dial it back because we were splashing lotion everywhere. Yep. Um, so we know that the pump uh, will do the work um, overall uh, and at a very, very low uh, setting rather so yeah uh, i was actually really imp uh, really impressed or really surprised by the results and uh, that it was able to load as quickly as it did um mm -hmm. uh, yeah and so we did take videos of that test uh so the videos will be in the description of the episode uh with whatever platform that you're on so youtube or on your podcast platforms uh so check out the description to see that video uh, yeah so you know after you get done pumping a really important step in sanitary pumping is the cleaning uh for for hygienics, right? Uh, so what does a typical cleaning regimen look like for lotion pumping? Most people will start with, and you hear the word a lot is CIP, right? Um, so if the pump's sitting there, they will run a clean in place process, which is basically you're running water and a cleaning solution through the pump to flush out any of the lotion that's in there, right? Um, on the diaphragm pump side, uh, especially with lotion, it being water-based and everything, it's gonna flush pretty easily. Um, so you'll see that a CIP um, flush sequence may be all you need, even with a diaphragm pump to get that clean. Um, if it's a heavier lotion or there's other stuff that kind of gets hung up in there, then after the CIP step, it's possible that you need to break the pump down and clean some of the cavities. Um, that's probably going to be a driving factor for like the more abrasive materials that we talked about, right? Because some of that stuff may get hung up in some of the, the crevices or if you have a high pigment or colorant content in there, right? And you're going to a different color, you wanna make sure it's all cleaned out so you don't get cross-contamination. Um, so CIP first, uh, if that's all you need for your application, that's usually good. If not, then you'll have to break the pump down and just kind of wipe it down and make sure it's clean and all those little crevices and areas that are inside there. Uh, so, so Jeremy, on the test that we did, uh, what did we do to clean the pump? So we took uh, a, a very rudimentary uh, CIP process. Um, I don't have, personally, I wasn't able to put together a, a CIP uh, and I don't want to have the whole set up for the, the solution. So all we did was run uh, two cycles of 40 gallons of hot water. And when I say hot water, I mean, it was about 90 degrees. Um, when we look at a typical CIP out in industry, uh, you're looking at, uh, depending on the application, it will actually be a steam. So you're looking at a, a very high pressure steam that's pushed into uh, the, the product. Uh, you can think about how active that is in removing and heating some of those oils and, and getting uh, some of the surfaces cleaned off. Uh, with us, it was just water. Uh, and as I said, it was uh, two cycles of 40 gallons um, at about 90, I think it was like 91, 92 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, and with that, uh, there was very limited material that was remaining. Uh, as far as the, the main constituent parts of uh, the lotion, the creamy stuff, I didn't see any uh, in, in the cleanup uh, or the cleaning side of it. I did see a little bit of oil on the diaphragms. And that's just because I don't think that 90 degrees um, was enough to, to get that loosened up. Uh, the other side is when we're pumping, we're just using the pump uh, to, to do that work for us. So we're only pumping it at about 20, uh, 20 PSI. Uh, if you add a little bit more pressure on that, now you have another force that's helping to, to remove that material from any of the surfaces, whether it's the stainless steel or the Teflon, so. The, awesome. the, the big thing with the oil there, Jeremy, uh, 
is just you think about dipping your hand in oil and washing it off with water it's still going to be kind of greasy right but yeah if you use soap it's going to come clean <laughs> right so just like on the diaphragm pump with oil if you just run water through it hot water it's going to be better right but if we had a a chemical cleaning agent in there, which is very typically used in the industry, it would have probably stripped all that oil off of those components mm -hmm. and you would have been perfectly clean, right? So that's absolutely the truth. Yeah. And it was our way of looking at it was the waters, the, mm -hmm. the best way to get the baseline. So yeah, adding yeah. those cleansers um, and looking at different, once again, looking at the different types of materials, um, different CIP processes vary from plant to plant. I know that 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 goat lotion that I had seen, uh, I bet you they have a, a very different cleaning regimen than um, a store bought store bought uh, market uh, brand mm -hmm. um, of of lotions. Um, so we do have that video also in the description. Uh, so you have two video links in the description uh, to go and take a look at both of those. Uh, gentlemen, any, uh, any parting thoughts on, on pumping lotions? I think from my perspective, we've covered a lot of different topics here. Um, just grace some of them, right? So maybe in a future discussions, we can go a little bit deeper on cleaning and other mm -hmm. avenues that we kind of just touched on. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So today uh, we discussed the characteristics of lotion, uh, things to keep in mind while pumping lotion, uh, and then how to clean pumps with lotion. And then we also talked about the tests that we ran here. Uh, so take a look at those descriptions uh, to see those videos. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, connect with us on LinkedIn. And that's all we have. So we'll see you on the next Pumpcast. Bye.